Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you all for being here and the service you've given our country. Uh, Mr. Levine, my home state of West Virginia sits just outside of the national capital region, which is often used in the FES contract as a way to geographically limit which companies can compete for the work for the Department of Defense. This is known as place of performance. A clause has been a hindrance to West Virginia and a number of other rural states without a significant military or industrial footprint, essentially preventing any company, any opportunity at increasing that footprint for business that don't exist in the region identified by the place of performance clause. And my question would be, would you agree that there's need for a change and if it would be basically still hurting the department if we don't change it uh, in the highly urban and high cost of living areas that is a strain anyway? I have to assume that the higher cost is being passed on uh, to the department and the taxpayers. So your comments on this would be appreciated. Well, so Senator, first of all, it's good to see you again. Um, you second too. of all, uh, I think that it, it, as I just was saying in, in response to Senator, uh, Senator Sullivan, it would depend on the market. So there's some things where, where place of performance may be important. I would think those would be fairly limited. Uh, something where you have to support an organization that is in the national capital region. And even that may be more attenuated these days as we're all getting used to remote work. So things that we thought in past years we needed to have a place of performance that was, that was close to uh, the, the organization or entity that was, that, that was in charge, uh, we may now, with, with, with our greater ability to work remotely, be able to move on from that. And I think it's something that deserves to re be reexamined. Are we using that? Correctly, there may there are probably still some places where we need to specify place of yeah. performance, uh, but it may be less today than it was even a year ago. Is it a policy in place, sir, or do you have the flexibility to make those changes or recommendations, or does it take legislation? Uh, I believe that the that the executive branch would have the ability to make that 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 change on its own. I don't believe that any legislation is required with regard to place of performance on contracts. Right. If you could check that out, I really appreciate that. Uh, Ms. Field, I was extremely disappointed last year's NDAA included the termination of the chief management officer position at the DOD. In light of the DO, uh, CMO's position uh, termination, I asked my staff to get on the phone with a number of experts, including yourself and Mr. Levine, to talk about how Congress can help shape cost reform in the DOD, specifically in the fourth estate. One idea that was brought up by the multitude of people was the creation of another undersecretary of defense Role, uh, whose role would be similar to the State Department's Deputy Secretary for Management and Resources. My question would be, while I don't want to see more bureaucracy added to the DOD without appropriate authority driving it, are there any concrete ways that we can empower a position within the department to ensure business reforms are instituted without constant oversight at the congressional level? Thank you for that question, um, and you're, you're absolutely right. Since 2005, uh, GAO has, has noted the need for a very senior official at the department to drive management reform. It was the same year we added DOD's approach to business transformation to our high-risk list. There are a number of different structures that could be used uh, to help drive change at the department. Now, changing a line in an org chart is not going to, to get you where you need to be. Uh, but what we, we believe the department needs is a senior official who is in full-time position created through legislation, has the responsibility, authority, and accountability for DOD's overall business transformation efforts, reports directly to the Secretary of Defense, brings significant and relevant experience to the job, is on a term appointment crossing administrations, and is subject to a performance contract. That's what we called for back in 2005. I think the legislation back in FY17 and 18 through the NDAA that created the chief management officer was actually very much in line with a lot of that. Uh, unfortunately, what we found is that the department didn't truly empower the CMO with those authorities because they were subject to the direction, control, and authority of the Secretary Thank of Defense, who did not support the CMO. Thank you very much. Yeah. Every business and economy runs an inherent risk of generating waste, but the clear difference here, in my opinion, is that the management of these vast programs of the DOD are not prioritized or incentivized with programs or audits that reinforce cutting waste. Furthermore, I feel as though waste in the DOD is far too often seen as an excuse as an excuse by product. And what troubles me is that the accepted normality is then passed off to the American taxpayer. So either one of you all, from a business reform perspective, what are the top concerns you have with the Defense Logistics Agency 
the Defense Information uh, System Agency, the Defense Finance, uh, the Defense Contact Contract Audit Agency, and Defense Contract Management Agency. Senator, uh, so I would say that, that the Defense Logistics Agency, in my experience, is one of the best run parts of the Department of Defense. Um, I can't tell you there's no waste there, but, it, but my impression is that it's extremely, it's extremely effective, effective and efficient, and that the consolidation of, of tasks that used to be performed in the military departments into a single agency uh, that, that runs them on a, consolidated base, on a consolidated basis for all the military departments has been, has, has been a success. Uh, DFAS is also uh, consumes far less resources than the services did when they performed similar functions. I think there are real questions now, though, about the interface between DFAS and the services as we try to get to financial audit, and whether sometimes that becomes more of a problem than than than, than a solution. Because we now, as as we field uh, these enter enterprise resource systems in the in the services, and and they're capable of doing some of the things that DFAS does. Uh, there may be some duplication there that causes more problem than it helps, and it's something that deserves to be looked at. Um, I give you one more, which is DISA. I think there's been some concern that DISA, DISA um, doesn't necessarily control all the all the all the all the things that it would like to control, and there's there there rival there's rivalry with the services. There's there's some. Uh, duplication of, of, of computing centers, as I understand it, and computing capability within DISA. Um, some of that may be uh, because it's located in places in the United States where it's hard to close, hard to close a facility once you have it. Um, but these, these are not agencies that are waste. These are agencies that are an essential part of the way the department operates, not only its business systems, but also its warfighting systems. DLA uh, and DISA in particular support the warfight and, and shouldn't be just viewed as, as overhead. Thank you very much. My time has expired. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.